Welcome to Wealthion. I'm Wealthion founder Adam Taggart. For the recent Wealthion conference, analyst Jeff Clark produced a detailed update of his forecast for the precious metals mining stock sector, inclusive of the stocks he favors most right now. It includes an update on his GDX Jeff portfolio, which he's compiled to compete with the popular GDXJ Junior Mining ETF. Jeff's video was offered as bonus content, and he's kindly agreed to let us make it publicly available now so that those who didn't register for the conference can get a sense of how in-depth the material shared during that nine-hour event was. If after viewing this video, you'd like to purchase the replay videos of the full conference, you can go to Wealthion.com conference. But for now, get out your notebooks and take good notes as Jeff shares his top mining stock picks. Enjoy. Hi everyone, this is Jeff Clark at thegoldadvisor.com and this is your bonus video for the Wealthy on Conference that Adam, Adam Taggart has been putting on. And boy, what a great conference it's been, right? It's been awesome. So I hope you've enjoyed it. And this video, uh, uh, this bonus video we have is going to talk strictly about uh, mining stocks. We'll talk a little bit about gold first, but it's strictly on mining stocks, uh, uh, my favorite passion, what I'm doing pretty much full time now. So uh, I hope you enjoy it. It's actually um, a takeoff from my PDAC presentation that I made about a week ago. This is the new and improved and updated version, though. So you're getting uh, the very latest uh, that I have here for you in this presentation. So uh, I'm going to be using PowerPoint slides. So I'm going to jump in there. Let's see if I can do this correctly. And I believe I did. OK, so what I'm going to focus on here is just what you see there. Will gold and silver stocks hit pay dirt in 2023? Um, and in order to answer that, we need to talk about gold and silver first. OK, so this is what I want you to know first. And that is, let's see if I can go to my next slide. Uh, there it is. OK, so I I just showed this chart last month for the first time. And, and by the way, this chart and, and several others about cycles are in the book Pater. Uh, But as you can see here, this chart is basically charting mining stocks, their ups and downs, their cycles since the 1970s. And look how big some of these are. Uh, you start on the left there, uh, that big cycle back in the 1970s, you can see how high it went, uh, how long it lasted. We're listing the days there as well. And uh, again, this is strictly just gold stocks or mining stocks, I should say. Uh, and then you can see the pullback. Look how far they fell after that cycle was over, 72.3%. That's huge. And then the next up cycle, 200%. The down cycle, they gave it back 60%. The next up cycle, 88%. They gave back 30%. And you can go on through all of these and see, and you can chart all the ups and downs, the cycles the gold stocks have had since the 1970s. The last up cycle, by the way, was the COVID bounce. You probably remember that back in 2020, we had the big sell-off. Uh, and then they bottomed in March, and they just took off until about September 1st. And that is that little blip you see on the far right, the COVID bounce. Um, that period was very profitable for me. Uh, so I do plan on uh, having another very profitable time in the next up cycle. And that's the point. Gold stocks cycle. You can see the down arrow on the far right that we have. That's from September 2020 to present, this is about a uh, from last month. So we're in a down cycle. So we may be near another up cycle. This doesn't tell us when it'll be, how big it'll occur. But the point is, you shouldn't give up just because gold stocks are in a down cycle. We want to wait for the next and prepare for the next up cycle. I love this chart. This is the basically GDXJ's ratio to gold. GDXJ, the Junior Miners Index, okay? And it's ratio to the gold price. And this is obviously only since GDXJ's inception. Um, and you can see where it went back in 2011, how it was outperforming gold. 
And then you can see it's been underperforming gold all the way to present. And look where we are now. There's been a jump in uh, the miners, but look at that. It's almost near its all-time lows uh, since its inception. So the value here uh, for miners currently in their relationship to gold is very, very strong, very, very undervalued. Here's another one. I love this one too. This is the HUI, the, uh, the Huey uh, stock index, I call it. Uh, so this is another mining stock index and its ratio to the S&P 500. And look at this. You can see on the far left there, it's all time low. You can see at the right there, uh, or in the middle, excuse me, um, it's all time high in 2011. And you can see where it is now. You know, the gold, I mean, um, common stocks, the S&P, uh, the Dow, especially the NASDAQ, they all crashed last year. So you'd think this ratio would be up, but it's not because mining stocks also crashed. They didn't do well last year. And so uh, even in the beginning of this year. So you can see mining stocks relative to the general stock market are near all-time lows. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Now for this to return back, uh, if my math is right, what is that, about 10 times uh, you know, for mining stocks to match the value of 2011, they would have to rise 10 times more than what common stocks did, whether that's a combination of, you know, the stock market falling and gold stocks rising. Uh, that shows you just how undervalued they are and the potential that's uh, here for us. Okay, this is a great chart from Tavi Costa, Prescott Capital, if you uh, know that name. Um, low volume suggests we're at a bottom and often precedes major upswings. This is very interesting. Uh, let me read this quote uh, from him to you while you look at the chart. The turnover volume for smaller mining companies remains incredibly depressed. As shown in the chart, the 50-day average traded volume in the TSX Venture Exchange is currently retesting its historical prior lows. Such levels of disinterest in the part of the industry have often marked major bottoms in share prices. We saw a similar scenario back in 2015 and in 2019, and in both periods, the TSX Venture Index rallied massively over the next one to two years. So this is evidence we have based on history, not just hope or something like that, this is actual data that shows us we may actually be at a bottom, especially with the junior miners. Here's another great technical chart. This is from uh, my friend uh, Steve Penny over at Silver Chartist. Uh, let me read his quote to you while you look at the chart. Gold is in a very long-term cup and handle pattern that remains intact. A conservative target is $2,500 gold on the next push once 2089 is cleared. And you can see the potential path he outlines there and how that could happen uh, very easily once that 2089 um, level is broken. So again, this is just further evidence showing us that uh, in the near to medium term, we could see a very strong turnaround in not just the junior miners, but in gold itself. And of course, as gold goes, so do the miners go. Okay, so what kind of potential do we have? Now, I've updated this from the my PDAC talk, but this is going to show the potential we have uh, based on where stocks currently are versus where they peaked at in 2011. And the potential is anywhere from 2 to 5x. Um, now, this is basically uh, if they match the, their 2011 high. Now, they're not going to exactly match it. They may not quite get there. They may exceed it. With everything going on, uh, the breakdown we have in things, uh, we could easily see them exceeding that. But let me show you what we have here. So on the left of these series of charts is the that index's 2011 high. Excuse me. So you can see on the left there, that bar represents GDX high in 2011. The bar on the right is as of March 10th, so just last Friday. Uh, so you can see the inset there, the green inset, the GDX would have to rise 138% to match its 2011 high. So it would have to more than double just to match it. 
Here's the uh, HUI Gold Bugs Index. You can see it's 2011 high there in the left. You can see it's uh, price uh, last week. And there you have the inset. Uh, the HUI would have to rise 194% to match the 2011 high. So basically have to almost triple just to match the 2011 high. And here's the silver one, SIL. So there's its high in 2011 on the left. There's its current price as of a week ago on the right. SIL would have to rise 256% just to match its 2011 high. So again, we're showing potential here uh, and just how undervalued they are, how oversold they are, and that they should be a lot higher based on the current gold and silver price. Uh, here's the GDXJ, the Junior Miners Index. There's a 2011 high on the left. There's its price as of a, on the right as of a, a week ago. And look at that. GDXJ would have to rise 422% just to match this 2011 high. So you can see there's a incredible potential here for uh, the junior miners. Uh, one more. The XAU, uh, it's called the Philadelphia Gold and Silver Index. I don't usually follow this one, but I think a lot of the mainstream fund type people do. Uh, and th this index is still out there. Anyway, there it is. The It's 2011 high on the left. It's current price on the right. And there you go. XAU would have to rise 461% to match its 2011 high. These are all mining stocks and showing you what their potential is. And the other thing I'll point out is this doesn't go back to 1980. A lot of these didn't exist back then, right? So if you were to able, if we were able to chart their 1980 highs, it would be a lot higher, showing the potential would be a lot higher. Don't know if they'll match their 1980 highs. I'm just trying to highlight how undervalued they are, how oversold they are, and what the potential is when they do turn around. So this tells us, you, you know, even if you're not buying right now, you're just holding and you're underwater, all this data is telling us to hold on. Okay, let's start talking about specific stocks. Who meets the pay dirt criteria? And in the book, Pay Dirt, if you're not aware of it, basically this is a book I wrote, on a how-to book on how to pick mining stocks. That's, what, that's all it is. And how to hit pay dirt in your portfolio, okay? There's very specific criteria that's in it. There's five specific criteria for every mining stock. And then there's advanced screening tools for each type of miner, whether it's a producer, explorer, et cetera. There's also 16 experts in the book, if you're not aware. And the interesting thing I uh, discovered while interviewing all of them all last summer was that they were, did not waver in their views about what to look for when you're picking a mining stock. They were very clear, very specific. Look for this, look for that. If you see this pass, if you see this, you might have a tagger by the tail. Um, they were very clear. And when you think about it, that's not too surprising because they have to be that specific and that, that clear and that confident about what they're looking for when they look for an asset or look for an acquisition or anything like that. So you'll find very specific advice in the book, both for myself and all these experts I included. There's hundreds of excer excerpts from all of them scattered throughout the book with very specific advice. So you will know once you read this book exactly what to look for and exactly what to do and when to pass on a mining stock. There's also the five commandments for all investors. Uh, the point I have with the goldadvisor.com is that any stock I put on that website has to meet all the criteria, not just some of them, not just a really good deposit, all other the criteria must be met. Okay, so who is that? Whoops, wrong, wrong key. Here we go. Now, I've talked about Cassier Gold before. I think if you follow me, you know I like this stock. Um, it's been underwater uh, for a while now, but there are a lot of reasons to hold on to this. We have a world-class exploration team. In fact, Cassier Gold is the only company that has two people in pay dirt that I interviewed. Everybody else has just one. 
They're in a pro mining jurisdiction. You may have heard me call this the geologist playground before because it's so big and there's so many targets. It's really going to take them years to fully explore all this. Um, and of course, they'll be they're focused on drilling now. The timing with this now is they're about to release drill results from Cassier South. Cassier North or Taurus, it's called, is the Baltonic asset asset. The uh, Cassier South is the high-grade vein deposits, and those are the results that we're likely to see come out very soon. So those could be very interesting for the market, could be a catalyst, we'll see. Um, but the point here is that there's 1.4 million ounces now. This is probably going to two, and then based on the asset size and all the targets, it's probably going to three. This is going to be an MA target uh, sooner or later. I think it's an MA target right now. Yet, um, if you own the stock, you're in strong hands because 10 institutional investors own it, including Sprott and Frank Holmes, US Global. It's a large personal position for me, and it's clearly definitely undervalued and oversold. So it's it's undervalued if you want to buy it or buy more shares, and it's oversold if you own it. Just hold on to it because it's way oversold and it will come back, especially when sediment changes in the gold market. Okay, and our next pick is Dolly Varden Silver. This is a silver pick, and I have some newer picks here uh, today that I want to share with you. The interesting thing about Dolly is that I owned the stock 10 or 12 years ago, something like that. Uh, I like the asset. I like the geologist. But the stock went nowhere and eventually sold for a small loss. So why would I be buying back into Dolly Varden now? Well, enter Sean Kuhn Kuhn. He basically took control of this company and completely revitalized it. You can read the story, the background on Dolly Varden uh, on the website. Um, but based on what he has done with this company, I had to buy back into the stock and, and make it a, a top pick for the goldadvisor.com. They have an impressive technical team. They're in the Golden Triangle of BC. It's a huge asset, 48 million ounces indicated, 96 million inferred. There aren't many silver assets out there that have, uh, what is that, 145 million ounces in all categories, roughly speaking. Um, the stock is also in strong hands, so I wasn't the only one that noticed uh, the changes that Sean has made with this company. Institutional investors own 50%, 7% of which is Fidelity. Yes, the Fidelity you see on TV. They rarely invest directly in mining companies, but they've invested in Dolly Varden Silver. Fury Gold owns 23%. Hecla owns 10%. Eric Sprott owns 10%, who Sean knows personally. We retail investors, along with management, only own 7% of the stock. So this stock is in very strong hands. Uh, I, I think that offers uh, a, a lower risk uh, proposition for us. In my opinion, this stock is a five-bagger, even though it's already got a big asset. Um, you can read why I think it's a big uh, a five-bagger asset, a uh, potential <laughs> asset, on the website. Uh, it's also my opinion this is probably going to be a very strong takeover target. So Dolly Varden is a buy. Uh, next is First Majestic Silver. Those of you who know me know that I've talked about them for a while, but I cannot ignore this stock. Even though they lost money last year, there's a very good reason for that, too. I, I explained that on the website. Uh, uh, and by the way, I update, I write on the every company's news uh just as if I was a newsletter writer writing for a paid publication. Uh, it's all for free, but I write the same quality of news and comments and analysis that I would uh, if I was working for a newsletter, and you can read it for free. And I explain why you shouldn't panic on that uh, uh, loss last year for First Majestic. Anyway, this is, uh, obviously everybody knows, this is Keith Newmeyer. He founded First Quantum. It's an $11 billion market cap today. This is a mid-tier on its way to a major. Uh, is there some M&A coming potentially? They have $151 million in cash, $202 million in working capital. The issue with last year is basically uh, the Jarrett Canyon mine. I've been there. That's a turnaround project. Uh, they're still working on it. They expect things to turn around this year. As of Q4 of last year, when they reported the loss, they'd only owned the asset 16 months. So I think one more year, 
buy one more year, they're going to have this thing turned around. And if not, you know, they'll have to make some tough decisions. Meanwhile, the Mexico operations are doing very well at their peak production, and their all in sustaining costs are only $14.42 an ounce. Look at the next uh, point there. First Majestic is going to have one of the fastest growth trajectories of any primary silver producer this year in 2023. They're going to grow anywhere from 12 to 18.5% in 2023. Now, that may not sound like a huge number. That's a big number, though, for a producer that's already of this size. You won't find another primary silver producer that's going to have that kind of output here in 2023. That alone makes First Majestic Silver a buy. Um, you know, the reason I own it, though, is the second to last point there. The stock has high leverage to silver. It almost trades like a junior. It has that kind of leverage. Anywhere historically, it's traded from two to ten times the silver price. So once silver really takes off, I think that leverage for First Majestic is going to kick in to the upside. We've seen it kick into the downside. Now we'll see it kick into the upside once it turns. Uh, I think you know this is a strong personal position for me. Hold it if you already own it. Strong buy uh, today if you don't. And next, there we go. Hercules Silver. This is a new pick for me, brand new on the website just the past couple of weeks. Uh, you can read the story of how it was formed. It was kind of interesting. It's a little different than how a lot of other companies, uh, 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 you know, come come into place. Um, basically, there's a team of very serially successful geologists. Not only that, the asset is in Idaho, and they have deep, uh, extensive experience working in Idaho. Um, so I think we don't have any uh, worries about any political or jurisdictional or even permitting risk here. Uh, they have as strong as team as anyone working in the state of Idaho. Uh, Quentin Henning, geologist Quentin Henning, he's in the book, by the way, but he's at Crescat, and he likes Hercules Silver. So why does he like it? Well, the soil samples came back grading anywhere from six, excuse me, seven to 600 grams per ton silver over a strike length of three and a half kilometers, which is over two miles long. That's pretty long for a strike length. So a typical soil sample is five grams per ton. So when they had up to 19 ounces per ton over a long distance, it was clear to uh, Clinton that Hercules had significant scale, and that's what he looks for. So what do they do? They invested over a million dollars in Hercules Silver. Uh, only 3% of the mineralized system here has been explored, so there's a lot of drilling to do. And here's the point of Hercules Silver. If further drilling is successful at the new targets, and if a large, high-strength chargeability anomaly is mineralized, you can read about more about that on the site, Hercules Silver has the potential to make a big discovery in 2023 and live up to its stock symbol. You can see the stock symbol up there near the top. In uh, the U.S., it's bad, B-A-T-E-F. But in Toronto, it's big. So uh, I think it's the Toronto symbol this is going to uh, you know, live up to. And again, this is kind of early stage, but it's a Brownfield's project. So... Uh, you can get in now uh, at a lo very low point before it makes the big discovery. And even if they don't make a big discovery, it's still going to rise uh, on positive drill results. I think they make a discovery, though. Scotty Resources, I really like this uh, uh, company and the stock. The CEO's Brad Work. Uh, look at that. He made an initial investment in Athabasca oil sands at $0.10, cents, and he took the public took the company public at $18. So I'll let you do the math on what kind of return that is. But it was so much for him. He actually retired. And he was only in his 30s, I believe, at the time. Uh, but he couldn't uh, you know, sit back forever. He had, had invested in Scotty, didn't like it was where it was going. So he basically took control of the company via hostile takeover, bought out management, and added uh, you know, property uh, uh, to the site, uh, to the company from 400 hectares to 59,000. So this is a big, big project and, and big, big property area, just like uh, Cassier Gold. This is a strong Brownfields property. It has seven past producing mines on it. 
Newcrest Mining and Ascot Resources are both right next door to it. The strike here is 1,400 meters long, 390 meters deep. It's still open at depth. So they're drilling. And the story here is that, you know, I was watching the company. They reported high-grade drill results. I thought, that's pretty good. Then a month later, they reported more high-grade drill results. Then they reported more high-grade drill results. I said, I got to take a look at this. And long story short, I invited them to the site. And since then, they've continued to report high-grade drill results. Look, this is a real discovery, and it's getting bigger. And that's my theme. You can see there. It's shaping up into a significant gold discovery. And that's exactly what is happening now. It's currently undervalued. And look, the stock is in strong hands. Yamada Gold owns 7%. Eric Sprott owns 11%. U.S. Global is invested as part of the institutional investor side. Many newsletter writers recommend this. I can tell you that. Uh, so drilling is the story here. Um, they're going to continue to do that. It's a strong buy, in my opinion. This could be uh, exciting. Okay, Stellmine Canada. Now, I've talked about this for probably a year or so, and the stock is right back down to the private placement price that I paid you know, a year or so ago, whenever that, that came out. So what's going on? Well, first, let's start with the story. I love the story here because it's the CEO is Isabel Pru. Her father was looking, uh, was a petroleum uh, uh, geologist. And was, they were looking for oil up in Quebec. And a lot of geologists said, well, look, there's no oil there. And even if there is, it's not a lot. Well, he proved them wrong. He found a big deposit. And you can see that the stock IPO'd at 30 cents, rose to 240 by the time he left for a gain of 700%. Isabel is trying to do the same thing. It's in a greenfields area. And basically, based on the geology that they have found so far, they have been buying up land around this uh, geological trend that they believe is highly prospective. And what's interesting is they've added a lot of land, but they did it now because two of their companies were starting to buy land around this area. So they wanted to grab it all up now which they did. They have a very large land package. Uh, so they spent some time and money doing that. Uh, but now that they have it, they're first movers, movers in the area. They have definitely have the largest land position in the area. And they understand the geology better than most based on the work they've already done so far. Uh, the first drill results came back from Mercator. Um, they showed mixed results. It didn't excite the market. Uh, so the stock didn't do anything. I think it even fell a little that day. But it did show technical success, and this is the way a lot of discoveries start. This is the very first drill hole into Mercator, the very first time it's seen drilling, and it was less than 2,400 meters, okay? So, but since it showed some technical su success, it's basically telling them a little bit more about the geology in the area, the way the deposit is formed, where the trend goes, and importantly, of course, where to drill next. So, it did show them a lot of technical things that help will help them in the next drill campaign. So they're going to be going after this. They will uh, raise more money to go after this. Uh, they're already doing an IP survey. They're already planning a second drill campaign. So this is uh, still a strong pick, even though it's right back down to its private placement price, which is an opportunity for you. And by the way, Michael Gentile, if you don't know that name, he was a very successful fund manager. He retired at a relatively young age, basically to manage, manage his own money. He owns 9.9% of the company. At the recent fundraising, uh, the financing, he didn't want to uh, have a lesser percentage of ownership. So he invested again in the private placement to keep his ownership that high. Uh, the theme for me uh, of Stellmine is this. We are just at the beginning of a potentially exciting story in Quebec. Uh, I think that's true. Give management time to really explore this site. They're doing it methodically and systematically, which is exactly what we want to see. Uh, stock is a major buy for me. Okay, the next one is Westward Gold. Um, and here's how I start my write-up on Westward Gold on the website. What if I told you all the gold in the Cortez trend? has not yet been found. And I think that's very true. I met with management at uh, PDAC 
had to sit down with them and learn some new things in addition to the, my write-up. But the one thing, I, the highlight I want to bring to your attention is this uh, map on the right. So the lines you see, they're all drill holes. But uh, notice all the red lines that say open. See all the red arrows that say open? Now you'll notice the purple area there on the right that doesn't have anything there, right? Well, that's exactly where Westward Gold is placing their very first drill. And if you see the red arrow there, sort of the one on the right, the longer one, the second one from the right, the drill hole is going to go right down the middle of that. They drew, I drew uh, an arrow on my um, on my page showing where the drill hole was going to go, and that's where it's going to go right down the middle of this thing. Now we don't know what they're exactly going to hit. You know, maybe they'll learn something. Maybe they, uh, but maybe they hit. So. Uh, the potential here is very exciting. Not only is, has there been mineralization at surface, there's been strong mineralization at depth, and that's exactly what we're going to find out. Uh, you'll see there in the last bullet point on the left, this is an early stage brownfield property that is wide open with drilling underway in a new zone the geologists are excited about. So we'll see if they're right, but I will tell you Westward Gold was invited to the site for a reason. It is an early stage gold explorer, but where they're exploring at is a Brownfields property. And if you look at their presentation, by the way, you'll see there are a number of companies that surround their project that are also either in production already or are projects being explored like Westward Gold. This is a highly prospective area. And I can tell you that from management, they tell me that the majors are watching them. The other producers in the area are watching them. So we should be too. This is a great time to get in early on this story. Okay, there are other top rec recommendations at thegoldadvisor.com. I didn't cover all of them. Um, on the left there, you can see the gold picks. I'm just going to go over these real quick because um, I don't want to make this video too long. <laughs> American Pacific Mining, I'm excited about this one. We have four projects. How many uh, juniors out there do you know that have are going to spend $30 million just this year on projects? A lot of that is from partners, but they have four projects that are going to get uh, uh, drilled all this year. It's going It could potentially be a very exciting year for American Pacific Mining. Oh, by the way, Michael Gentile owns that one as well. Aztec Minerals, uh, they're drilling two projects right now. Uh, both are potentially exciting. One is uh, if they can connect up two zones um, at one of their projects, it'll go from a, what would be a small mine to a medium-sized mine. So that would be a potential game changer for them. Benchmark Metals, I've talked about this for a while. It's my top takeout candidate. Basically what management is doing now is making the asset all pretty and get it, get it ready for a major that might want to might want it. It's got three and a half million ounces already in all categories. It's going to get bigger. They just announced they're drilling uh, 20,000 meters this year, which is pretty aggressive for a company that already has three and a half million ounces. So it's probably going to get bigger and uh, uh, get in better shape or more attractive shape uh, for a major to buy it out. Independence Gold funds have been recently buying it. They just started drilling. They can drill in winter where they're at in BC. Drilling just started there could be potentially exciting for Independence Gold. Uh, that's one I own and is on the website. P2 Gold is the first stock on the website I made a, quote, major buy. And that's because of the news that they just had come out. They had two pieces of news just last week. Uh, read them if you're interested in the stock. Read about what I say and, and my analysis on what happened there and why I made it a major buy. Basically, they have two properties they're advancing. Snowline Gold, just uh, as I'm recording this, uh, B2 Gold just announced that they were buying 5% of Snowline Gold. So now you have a global um, a gold producer uh, that is moving in to buy part of Snowline Gold. And get this, the financing price, it was flow through, but it was priced 99% <laughs> above the closing stock price the day before. So almost twice what the stock price was before this announcement. So they obviously, uh, you know, have a lot of faith that this thing is, is going to go. Uh, do they have over 5 million ounces there? If they do, we've got a brand new gold camp uh, up there in the Yukon. 
Uh, silver picks, Arizona Silver, exciting, uh, fairly new pick. Drilling is done. Assays are pending. This is a good time to pick this one up. Early stage, but potentially exciting. BlackRock Silver has already made three discoveries. They're advancing all three projects right now. We're going to see progress on them. Don't give up on this stock if you own it. Arena Silver, uh, three projects again. All are going to be drilled here in 2023, so we could see some interesting things uh, come back from them. Silver Hammer has got a brand new CEO. I met him at PDAC. I tweeted out a picture of us uh, at the conference there. Uh, basically, he's going to get aggressive about the company. Uh, that's what they were looking for in a new CEO. And what's interesting is he mentioned the possibility of M&A. Uh, the press release announcing him mentioned the possibility of M&A. And Warwick Smith, who's the backer of this, mentioned the possibility of, of M&A in the video he released when the other CEO was let go. So, hmm, do we see <laughs> some more uh, acquisitions by Silver Hammer uh, this year? That's very, That could be very interesting. And by the way, Warwick Smith is also the CEO of American Pacific, who was very aggressive in picking up um, some assets there, guys like CEO of the year. So, uh, we might just see something from Silver Hammer. And in the meantime, yes, all three projects are going to be advanced this year. They're going to see exploration activity. So we'll probably see a little bit more push this year uh, coming from management on all three projects. Suma Silver, I own, uh, this is one of my larger silver speculations. I really like this company. There is Drill Core um, at, from Muggy One uh, down in New Mexico that's at the lab right now. Galen McNamara, who's won awards as a geologist, even though he's young, was holding up a picture of some drill core, and you could just see all the color running through it, which is mineralization. How I like to look at it is this. I've never said this before, but uh, you know how alcoholic drinks have uh, a lot of color in them, and that means they have a lot of calories usually, right? Well, same thing with drill core. If you see lots of color, they have lots of mineralization. <laughs> so it depends uh, what that mineralization is, if it's, you know, gold and silver and that sort of thing. Uh, but that's sort of a trick I use to, to know. Uh, when you see lots of color, that's usually a good sign there's a lot of mineralization in it. Anyway, that's at the lab now. Assays are pending. Good time to pick up some shares there. If you want, they've got funding for the year, so no more raises or anything like that. One of, again, one of my larger silver specs. Okay, some of you have asked about the GDX, Jeff, and the update there. So let me uh, give you an update on those. Uh, first of all, half there were 10 companies back in uh, January of last year uh, that I picked that I thought my port GDX, Jeff, was going to outperform the GDX, J. There were 10 stocks in there, um, and five of those have since been invited to the goldadvisor.com. So if you remember the original portfolio, uh, five of those are are in the portfolio now are, are on the website. So here's the five that are not. So let's go through those real quick. First is Ascot Resources. This stock has been hammered hard because uh, they did have some issues as they started to progress in development and get toward construction. But they just raised two hundred million for mine construction. That's going to start this year. First gold pour, according to management, is going to be early twenty twenty four. That's excellent. Uh, let's assume they can hit that or get close to that. And they continue to drill the site, and they just had their highest grade hit ever on the site for all the drilling that they've done. So there's still a lot of potential to grow this asset as well. So in my opinion, I own this stock. I'm overweighted. Um, it's a stronghold for me. That's how I'm going to rate it. So if you own it, I would hold it, at least until production, okay? Uh, Artemis Gold, another big... Uh, holding for me, uh, and as you can see there, they had big news. They just got their uh, BC mining permit. That's a that's a big deal. It, it's a lot of work. It's hard to get. Uh, they just got awarded it for their uh, uh, project. And get this, the project there is going to produce 385,000 ounces of gold a year for 17 years at $825 an ounce. That's the projection in the last feasibility study. Uh, first gold pour is not till the end of 2024. So it's a year and a half, you know, maybe 21, 22 months away, something like that. Um, so it's going to be later next year. 
Um, but if you own it from the original GDX, Jeff, I would definitely hold it. It's a strong hold, in my opinion. Again, we're going to hold this up until production, at least. Uh, this one is worth holding because it's it's just so big and it's going to be a mine. Same with Ascot. It's going to be a mine. Marathon Gold. Construction is actually already underway for their deposit. And first gold pour is expected in about two years, you can see there, Q1 of 2025. So it's a couple years away. It is going to produce 195,000 ounces a year at $1,007 um, a cost over a 14.3 year mine life. Um, again, it's two years away, but I would still hold on to this stock. There's no reason to sell it now. Uh, our game plan here is going to be to hold it until production. Uh, we'll probably see a re-rate. And that's the point I want to make about these first three, Ascot, Artemis, and Marathon. There will be the re-rate. Uh, it's been delayed for all of them, but there will be a stock re-rate as they near production. And the timing can be very good because by then, I think we'll have a strong gold bull market again. And that will uh, obviously really help. Uh, so when we get to, um, since they're all in construction or, or about to be, um, we want to hold through that process, look for a stock re-rate leading up to uh, the first day uh, of gold pour. And I think you know what to do then based on Lobo T. Gray's research. If you've read that, uh, you can find a link to it on my site. But anyway, uh, if you've read that, you want to take profits at least that first pour, the day you see that announcement, and uh, maybe even sell the whole thing. We'll see. Uh, but we want to hold at least till then. And if you don't own these, by the way, they've all been beat up pretty good, especially Ascot. They've all been beat up. Uh, Marathon 2, uh, they would be a good buy right now. Go Gold Resources, They've continued to grow the site there. They have a small uh, silver production uh, going on as well. Uh, they continue to grow though. But look at that, 188 million ounces silver equivalent in M&I, 93 million in inferred. Uh, that's a pretty big asset. And they continue to drill it. This is a pretty strong team uh, working at the project here. However, um, and I don't like to be negative on companies, but I will say that the you know when I looked at the presentation recently to update it for PDAC and for this uh, uh, talk, it wasn't updated. Uh, it was talking about their drill results and their drill program, excuse me, for 2022. Uh, well, your planning for your drill program in 2022 is you know definitely old news. So it wasn't updated. I, I didn't care for that. Uh, and in, there has been some poor communication uh, with them, uh, lack of responses, delayed responses, things like that. So I was kind of turned off by that. I don't like that. Uh, so as a result, I'm waiting, rating this as a hold, but a weak hold, um, meaning it's not something I'd particularly uh, be uh, wanting to buy right now. But I, if you own it, I would definitely hold it. Um, but even then, if you want to buy it, you know what? It's probably going to be bought out. The site is just too big. It's in a pro mining jurisdiction in Mexico. Uh, good resource, good grades, big resource. It's going to be bought out. It just has to be. So even there, um, I think you could uh, speculate on it if you want. And then Maple Gold. Some of you have asked me about Maple Gold as well. So... What changed for me was when the DUE results were reported in November of last year. You can look up the press release. Uh, in my opinion, those results were disappointing. Um, other results, DUE results that reported have been, you know, mediocre. Uh, some have been mediocre at best. Um, and what I mean by that is either low grades, low wits, or a combination of both. Uh, the Douay thing was disappointing because that was going to be the prize where we're drilling at depth. Other um, uh, projects in the area drilled at depth and found higher graded depth. Uh, unfortunately, in my opinion, Maple Gold did not. Uh, they believe they can potentially make it work. Um, we'll see about that. Um, so I am rating that a weak hold. Um, uh, the thing is, they do have three projects. Two are joint ventured with Agnico Eagle, and they also own the Eagle Mine themselves outright, 100%. All three of those are getting drilled. So things could change there. We could see some you know, positive results. Um, but the stock has been weaker than most stocks. Um, there are many stocks that are down, just like Maple Gold, but there's been no 
real bounce in it. It's basically still a penny stock, um, uh, you know, after being a lot higher and it just hasn't uh, gained any traction. So uh, for whatever reason that's going on, I'm just as I'm not as excited about Maple Gold. I would hold it if you hold it. Uh, um, this means I probably wouldn't buy it. It would be a high speculation, in my opinion, if you were to buy it now. So that's the update on Maple. Okay, to conclude this, I just want to let you know everything that I'm doing and what I'm offering to people uh, at thegoldadvisor.com. Basically, thegoldadvisor.com is designed to help you with your due diligence. I'm basically writing newsletter quality comments on all the companies that are on the site, 19 so far, and there will be more, by the way, so always have some cash. Um, but I'm writing, you know, newsletter quality comments on their news and their developments and all that, explaining it, you know, providing education, providing analysis and recommendations about the stock. Um, I'm not just, a, you know, going to say it's a strong buy every time. I've only said that with one stock and I even put a stock on hold uh, last week. So that's in the portfolio. So anyway, um, I'm providing it to you for free because a lot of things that I learned um, I wanted to give back to the community in the same way. So that's what I'm doing. Um, it's free to you. All you have to do is create login credentials. And of course, we don't sell your email, do any spam. You can unsubscribe anytime. There's even a choice of frequency of what you want to receive. There's articles and videos on the side. The video we just posted the day I'm recording this was with Daniela Camboni. That was a fun interview. You can see that on the website. There's a lot of do-it-yourself resources. There's my background, my dad's biggest find as a gold prospector. When you sign up, if you create login credentials, you'll get the uranium special report free. It goes over my entire uranium portfolio, why I like each one. Uh, the main thing is the ongoing mining stock analysis on all my personal largest holdings. That's what you can get at thegoldadvisor.com. On the right there, just to wrap things up, is the book Paydirt. Again, it was written in mine for someone who doesn't know anything. But even if you've been around the industry for a while, I think you'll find some gems in there uh, that could be very useful. Again, there's 16 other experts from the industry that all weigh in on different aspects of how to hit Paydirt. And I love the chapter in there. There's a whole chapter devoted to examples of Paydirt. And there's like dozens and dozens and dozens of examples of uh, stocks that have hit Paydirt over all kinds of uh, timeframes and even bear markets. Uh, at this point, the book is digital only. We're working with Amazon now to get a physical copy. I like the digital only because it includes active links. And some of those links include uh, discounts for newsletters in case you want to subscribe. You can read it on your laptop. Um, and it was cheaper for me to produce and even offer to you. I don't have to collect taxes, for example, because it's digital download. Uh, but there's a physical copy coming. It's $25 right now. There's more information at thegoldadvisor.com slash paydirt. Uh, I can tell you that people that have read it uh, have given me some very positive feedback. I'm very grateful to, to see that, and I'm very thankful for it. You can see a sample chapter on the website, the most terrifying mine I've ever entered. And yes, I went down a hole, and I will give you a clue. If you're claustrophobic, you may get nervous reading that chapter. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, uh, find the book useful. And uh, again, it's on the website if you want to pick it up. Well, I hope this has been uh, uh, useful for everyone. This concludes the talk. I hope you find it profitable. And I will see you at the next conference. Thanks, everyone. We hope you enjoyed Jeff's video. He really doesn't hold any details back, does he? If you're interested in investing in the precious metals mining sector, let me remind you that these stocks are speculative and can be highly volatile. If you don't have much experience with them, we highly recommend you invest in them under the guidance of a professional financial advisor who has years of experience with this sector, who can help you determine how much exposure to it is prudent for your personal situation and what possible hedges may be appropriate to help limit your downside risk. If you don't already have a good one who can do this for you, then consider scheduling a free consultation with the financial advisors endorsed by Wealthion by filling out the short form at Wealthion. Com. And if Jeff's presentation makes you want to watch all the replay videos of the full conference, you can purchase them over at Wealthion.com slash conference. And don't forget to hit the like button before you go, as well as the red subscribe button below and that little bell icon right next to it. 
Thanks for doing that, and thanks so much for watching.